On today's show, I want to talk about the Fed's raising interest rates. And my belief is that Fed's raising interest rates will not slow real estate demand. As a matter of fact, I think it's going to increase it. Do you agree? Yeah, I mean, nobody's got a crystal ball, right? I mean, no, there's we don't. a lot of variables at play. You, just, you never know exactly what's going to happen. But I would definitely tend to agree with you. I think what's going to happen is this. They raise interest rates. So they're trying to fix a problem that they created. They created a problem back during COVID when they lowered interest rates to sometimes two and a half percent, two and three quarter, three percent, really, really cheap mortgages. And people got used to that, right? Right. That became the normal for people. It became what was perceived as the new normal. Yes. Where, where in reality, having, you know, three percent interest rates was very abnormal. But, you it know, pe people always want the best of the best, right? Yes. And that's awesome. But now... We're in more of a regular cycle. But they also have those 3% mortgages on their houses, so they don't want to sell. Right. When you raise interest rates to what they are now, 7.5% on a 30-year fixed mortgage in some cases, maybe even 8% in some banks, all of a sudden, the people that have 3% have no interest in selling their house because they have to refinance their new house at 7%, so they're going to have to buy a smaller house. Right. Or not move at all. So most people, if they're not a motivated seller, are going to choose to just simply not move. Right. What that's going to do is that's going to create less inventory. Less people moving means less houses for sale, less inventory. Less inventory means there's still more demand. They think by fixing the problem on the buyer's end, they're going to fix the problem. What they don't realize is they're creating more of a supply and demand problem because you're now you're going to have, yes, you're going to have less buyers that can afford rates at the higher percentage rates. Right. That, sh that, that makes that buyer's pool smaller. But then you're also going to have buyers that are are buying houses out of desperation because they're worried that the interest rate's going to go up even more in the future. I was one of those people. I think it was probably the late 90s, early 2000s, and I wanted to buy my first house. And the interest rates were, you know, slowly going up at the time. And I bought out of desperation, hoping that I could lock in so that I wouldn't get a higher interest rate later on. So there's going to be you know, there's going to be a balance there of the people that don't want to buy yeah. because of the interest rates, but then also the people that are buying out of desperation because they want to get in the house. So let me ask you a question. Do you remember how much you paid for that house? Take a stab. And what year was it? I don't know. It, it was, it was. Let's think about it. Probably early 2000s. Early 2000s. Um, and what was, do you think you paid for that house? It was in Mansfield, Texas. Okay. Um, it was probably close to, close to 200 what would you guesstimate, being what we do for a living and our students and everything we see in there, what would you guesstimate that same house is going for today in Mansfield, oh, Texas? Oh, boy. That's a good question. Right. I know we don't uh, know. I'm putting you on the spot. But what do you think? I'm going to look that up after this. Um, I I think that house is probably close to 354 So think about that for a minute. Yeah. You paid a higher interest rate to buy a house back then because out of desperation because you said, okay, I don't want the rates to go up any higher. But that same house now, some, let's call it 20 years later, yep. is probably doubled, if not yeah. more. If you think about that, it's probably more than doubled in value. Yeah. So. Now I kick myself for selling it. The question becomes, <laughs> right. Well, I mean, the question becomes, is now a good time to buy real estate? Right. And the answer is always yes. People's perception is, boy, I really should wait. I want to buy a house at 3%. Well. We may never see that again. Yeah. That, uh. That chicken has left the coop, as they that say, right? That ship has sailed. Ship has sailed. That bird has flown. Whatever kind of stupid uh, saying Analogy. you want to say. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's over with. And so you have to focus on what you have in front of you now. So if you finance a house and you can figure out how to pay for in other words, if you're going to do it as a rental, well, then figure out how to put a tenant in there. Maybe it's a lease option tenant that pays more. Maybe it's a short-term rental like an Airbnb uh, that we do sometimes to cover those costs, whatever it might be. However you can cover the cost of a mortgage, you'll never go wrong as long as you hang on to that real estate. So I think we just have to come back and ask ourselves, when the feds are doing this, do people panic? Because I think people panic when they see the interest rates raise. I had a conversation I'll show you today, but do you think people panic when interest rates raise and, and stop buying? Uh, I think people panic. I don't think they necessarily stop buying, though. Right. Because they still are doing the normal things in life. They still grow up. They want to leave their parents' basement. Yep. They, yeah. The first-time homebuyer niche, niche in particular 
is never going to dry up because there are, p- are people that are always graduating college. They're having babies. They want to get out of an apartment. They want to have their own four walls. So I don't think that well is ever going to dry up. No. It's and- just that less people will be able to afford it as they raise rates. But again, it's not like we have enough inventory. I have to and, go back to that. And one could make the argument that you know, this is a good time for builders to build. But number one, you know, there's still only so much land that's near areas where people that were areas are populated. True. And yes, those do tend to spread out over time, but that doesn't happen overnight. And builders aren't necessarily knocking the doors down right now either because of the cost of materials to build. So their margins are very small. So is that going to be a viable option for creating more inventory? You know, that's not a market that we spend time in really looking at, but I have done some research just a little bit lately on that to see that, you know, builders can make a significant return 20 or 30 percent on their on their money now because of the low demand or i'm sorry because of the high demand and the low supply so because they can sell the houses for more right they're done if they can create more of what is in demand they're going to make a lot more money when they sell that house so people say yeah but people won't pay the high interest rates well we've sold our two our last two sales in the last two weeks have been all cash offers now that's in upstate new york and those are going for one went for 20000 over asking, one went for 30000 over asking with multiple bids. And both of them were all cash offers. So people are finding ways to use cash. Maybe it's family and friends. Maybe they have sold off a house with an incredible equity they've built. And now they just want to buy that house all cash. So there's a lot of things happening in the market that are really changing things. And the Fed's moving things around are not going to not going to make changes like they think, it's, they, think, they think it's going to happen. Yeah, and I think that's important to note too. Like you mentioned that that's in Albany, New York. And that's not exactly an area where people are knocking down the door to to move to. That's just right. that's just people that are that are already living in that area that are buying. It's it's the majority of America. Right. It's average middle class Americans that right. want to have a better home and want to have a new home for themselves. But Keep going back to the fact that we have a supply and demand problem in our economy right now, period. There are not enough houses for buyers that we have. So no matter what you raise the interest rates to, even though myself and all the people I talk to and my peers, we all say, man, there's got to be an end to this soon. Eventually, things have to slow down. Will they? There's going to be less buyers, but there's less houses. So the houses that are there are still going to sell. Right. And that takes me back to what we do. We focus on finding motivated sellers because when you find a motivated seller that's in any market, you're going to be able to buy that house below market value and then let that property or sell that property for top dollar because you found an off market property, you fixed it up or you just cleaned it up and put it back on the market and sold it for top dollar right now. So therefore you can create your own equity, create your own wealth just by finding those off market deals. So that is it. We, we are firm believers that there's never a bad time to buy real estate. Your strategy might change. For sure. Well, your, yeah, your of course. Your technique is going to change, you know, and adapt to the market. But, but, I mean, real estate has and always will be cyclical. So you have to learn how to ride the cycles and do what's best in that particular economy. I think that everybody gets really confused by the media, too. Today, I had a conversation with a, with a potential private lender. One of our lenders referred a friend of his, and he ta- he said, listen, I've been working with these guys. I've made millions of dollars in returns over the years, and you know, um, I'd like you to consider being an investor with them because we were looking for more investors at the moment as we're growing. And as I talked to this gentleman, he said – I got done with my my whole you know pitch about what we do and who we are, and he said, well, it's a rough time to be in real estate right now. And I said, do me a favor and, and take yourself out of the news for a minute, and let's look at the reality of the situation. I went over how there's low supply, or there's low supply with a high demand right, right now, and he agreed. And I said, do you see interest rates slowing that down? He's been around for a while, and he said, no, I remember. This guy said, actually, the first farm I bought – I remember paying 16 or 17% interest on my farm. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand that money was less, income was less, but it's all relative. And he said, I remember paying a higher interest rate back then because that's all you knew. And that's what happens. Yeah, and I think it's key what you just said, too, about um, as we're we're looking for more investors because we're still growing. We're still growing in this market. And this is, this is, uh, what month is this? August of 2023. Yes. So we're, we're still growing. Yeah. So don't delay. If you're someone thinking about getting into real estate investing, you're saying to yourself, I'm going to wait till the market cools down. 
I don't know when we're going to see a cool down, but a cool down will not mean a reduction in price. And if we do, it'll be so minuscule. It'll be one or 2% maximum just as the market might adjust. But as long as we have a supply and demand problem, there's going to be massive opportunity for us. And because people have locked in, I mean, our house rate is 2.85%. I'm not selling that to move into a 7% rate anytime soon. Heck no. I I had to buy a much smaller house and we live on the water and I'm not going to move. I love where I live, right? So I'm locked in just like many Americans are locked in. So we're going to have this for a long time. My advice is lock in, get yourself used to whatever rates are going there and figure out how to buy those houses.